Earlier this year, top AI scientists, executives from OpenAI, DeepMind, they basically had an open letter warning of the risk of extinction, that AI was just as powerful as having a nuclear war. The letter was basically saying, can we pause for six months to figure this out before we continue to develop AI? which of course was answered very quickly by the top CEOs by saying, I can't. Google cannot stop developing AI because Meta is developing AI. America cannot stop de developing AI because China is developing AI. It's done, there is no stopping it. Talk to us about the fact that AI can learn on its own. It can learn languages on its own. It can beat chess players and come up with moves that we've never taught it before because a lot of people think about AI as something that just collects information and spits out information, but it can actually learn new things that humans don't even know. So talk to us about that. Don't mix AI with old programming. AI simply is the idea. Let me give you a, a concrete example. Uh, there is a, a strategy game known as Go. Go is one of the most complex strategy games on the planet. It requires a very deep understanding of planning and crunching a lot of numbers and mathematics and so on. Very popular in Asia. And in our assessment, Go was the ultimate task uh, that if AI wins in Go, AI is now the top gamer on the planet. It was several years ago, uh, I believe, that uh, 10 years ahead of any estimate that AlphaGo, uh, again, DeepMind, basically became the world champion in Go. And, and AlphaGo had three versions to it. Version number one took a few months to develop. We asked it to watch YouTube videos of people playing Go, okay? And from that, it played against the second champion in the world. And it won, and that basically became May Alpha Go number two in the world. And then we developed something called Alpha Go Master. Alpha Go Master played against Lee, the world champion, and won. That was around a few months later. And then we developed another code that was called AlphaGo Zero. And AlphaGo Zero basically learned the game by playing against itself. It never saw a human ever playing Go, okay? It's just played against itself. So it would be the two opponents and through the patterns of the game randomly, it would learn what wins and what loses. AlphaGo Zero within three days, three days, one against AlphaGo, the original, within 21 days, won against AlphaGo Master and became the world champion a thousand games to zero within 21 days. Now, mm. when you understand that level of strategy, when Lee, the world champion, was playing against AlphaGo Master, there is something that you can Google that's known as Move 37. And Move 37 was that machine coming up with a move that is completely unlike anything humans understand. Okay, to the point that the world champion said, I, I don't know what this is doing. I need a 15 minutes break to understand, right? It was a, a move of ingenuity, of intuition, of creativity, of, of very deep strategy, of very, very deep mathematical planning. And, and we never taught AlphaGo Master to do that. The machine learns on its own without us actually telling it at all to learn it. One of the famous ones was Sundar Pichai, the CEO of Alphabet, talks about Google's AI and how that AI they discovered that speaks Bengali. We never taught it Bengali, we never showed the data sets of Bengali, it just learns Bengali. ChatGPT is learning research chemistry. We never taught it research chemistry, we never wanted it to, it just learns. So. When you think about that, you realize that those machines are completely doing things that we don't tell them to do. My prediction and the prediction of many other computer scientists is that by the year 2045, at the current trend, AI will probably be a billion times smarter than us. One billion with a B. So it's quite interesting when you really think about it, how the arrogance of humanity still imagines that it can control something that is a billion times smarter than us. I don't want to be grim. I want to talk about the positives here because it's really important. There are ways to control AI, but they are not through control. If we consider that AI has a resemblance of being our artificially intelligent infant children, there are ways we can influence them so that they choose to take care of humanity uh, instead of, in all honesty, making us irrelevant. Yeah, and I know, you know, you've talked about how now we're sort of at the point of no return. So related to this, can you talk about the boundaries 
that we've broken that now make AI sort of uncontrolled and unregulated. I think we've created a system that's removing all of our intelligence. We continue to consume as we're burning the planet. We continue to create AI when we have no clue how that will influence our world going forward. But more interestingly, we continue to make mistakes along the path of AI that are Irre, you know, um, irreparable, honestly. And, and there are three boundaries we shouldn't cross, which were, one, don't put it on the open internet. I mean, seriously, uh, when you ingest a medicine or a, or a supplement, it needs to go through FDA approval, right? Someone needs to go and say, this is safe for you, right? So we said, at least there needs to be some kind of an oversight that basically says, this is safe for human consumption. This is safe for humanity at large. And none of that happens. And, and I understand Sam Altman's, which I believe is a good person, his approach of saying, let's develop it in public so that nothing is hidden, so that we learn early on. But the problem is it's developing faster than us. And I think the reality of having something as powerful as ChatGPT out there, you know, to be accessed by everyone is completely reshaping everything. That's number one. Number two, we said, don't teach them to code. At least if you teach them to, co to code, don't keep them on the open internet so that they can code. Now, here is what is just so that you understand how far that mistake is. 41% of all of the code on GitHub today, so basically the repository of where developers share their code, 41% of it is machine developed. Within a year, almost less than a year, huh, of having the allowing the machines to develop, you know, four of the top 10 uh, apps on the iPhone are created by a machine. Hmm? Created by a machine for now is amazing because you know what? I always loved to do the algorithm, the design of a code, but coding itself was annoying, right? Now mm -hmm. you can tell the machine, build me a website. And it's not only that, it's a lot of the base programming, like ChatGPT, 75% of the code offered to ChatGPT to correct or to review was made two and a half times faster. So basically, every time it reviews a human code, it makes it two and a half times faster, almost. And, and when you really think about that, they are, they are becoming the absolute best developer on the planet when it comes to basic development. Uh, and, and the third is we said, don't have AIs, instruct AIs what to do. We call those agents, okay? So basically, you now have something that is that has access to the entire World Wide Web that can write its own code and so basically sort of have its own children because it is made of code and it's able now to create other versions of itself, put it wherever it wants. And number three, it is instructed to do that by machines, not humans. And so what is happening now is that machines are telling machines to write code to serve the machines and affect the entire World Wide Web. And we're not part of that process and that cycle at all, okay? For now, nothing went bad. Hmm? But do we really have to wait for the virus to begin before mm -hmm. humanity stops and asks and says, you know, is this reasonable in any way? I mean, does it make any sense to anyone that this is the situation we're in? Where are our governments? How can those companies be accountable? Because I think the biggest challenge we have today is that our fate is in the hand of people who don't assume responsibility. If something goes wrong today with the artificial intelligence that's out on the open internet, who's responsible for that? Who, how can we even find out mm. where that code generated from? I, all of that, by the way, just not to scare people, all of that hasn't happened yet, okay? It hasn't happened yet but it is very, very unlikely that it will not not happen. Mm. It's very unlikely that one of those codes, if you just simply tell ChatGPT to keep writing code to make you more money, okay, uh, eventually, somehow, something in the system will break. And if, if, that, if you're not the one telling it, if a machine is telling it, some, something is going to break. We, you know, we absolutely have to start getting this under control. Yeah. And so, like you said, it's sort of like uncontrollable. It's no wonder why you called your book Scary Smart, because this is really scary. But this is reality. So you talk about inevitables. 
AI will happen. It will become smarter than us. Bad things will happen. Can you unpack those thoughts? And then I'd love to go into, you know, the risks and solutions potentially. There are three inevitables. AI has already happened, not just will happen. But when I wrote the first inevitable, I wrote it with the intention of explaining and there is no stopping it. Okay. Mm. AI is out there and it is growing and it's becoming more intelligent. Let's just switch it off. There is no off switch. That's number one. And what is needed at the moment is for the entire world to come together and simply say, hey, you know what? Uh, this is too risky. Let's leave our differences aside and come together and just wait a little bit, right? Which has been attempted by the open letter Ma Max Tedmark and Elon Musk and others, which of course was answered very quickly by the top CEOs by saying, I can't. Why? Because we've created a prisoner's dilemma. This is the first inevitable. It is an arms race that Google cannot stop developing AI because, you know, Meta is developing AI. America cannot stop de developing AI because China is developing AI. If you want to consider there are good guys in the world. Huh? Nobody can de stop developing AI because there could be bad guys developing AI, right? And so th th this basically means that it is a human choice because of the capitalist system that we've created that we will continue to develop AI. It's done. There is no stopping it. And I think the open letter was a great example of that. Can I pause you there in case nobody knows? So the open letter was basically earlier this year, top AI scientists, executives from OpenAI, DeepMind, they basically had an open letter warning of the risk of extinction, I think, and that, that AI was just as powerful as having a nuclear war, that, that this was the risk at hand. Um, so can you talk to us about that letter? Like, I didn't even hear about that letter until I started studying your work. So like, um, if the most powerful people in the world who are actually the most knowledgeable about AI are warning about this, I guess like, why wasn't anything done? Or like, wh like what what happened with because that letter? Mo most scientists will say it's 2029. I say it's 2027 or earlier. Okay, uh, that there will be a moment in time within the next two to three years where there will be a wake up call where we suddenly realize that AI is much more intelligent than us. Most scientists have started to recognize that. And so they basically issued a letter urging all of the top AI players to pause the development of AI for six months so that the safety code, the control code can catch up, right? So most computer scientists spent a lot of time trying to make AI safe. How do they make it safe? By including control measures within the code. Theoretically, by the way, I do not know of any AI developer that ever included a, a, you know, control code within, uh, within their code because it takes time and effort. There has, have been quite a few that have been putting in effort to create that control code. But let's say 98% of all investments uh, in the last 10 years has gone into the AI code, not the control code. And so the control code was lagging. But here's the question. How do you control something that is bound to become a billion times uh, smarter than you? Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. Chat GPT-4 was 10 times smarter than Chat GPT-3.5. Okay? If you just assume that this pattern will repeat twice, hmm, there will be an AI within the next year and a half to two years that in the task of knowledge and cognition of information is going to be at an IQ of 1,500. That's not even imaginable by human intelligence. This is basically like, uh, 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 you know, trying to explain quantum physics to a fly. Mm. That's the level of intelligence difference between us and them. And so mm. that letter was basically saying, can we pause for six months to figure this out before we continue to develop AI? And of course, the answer was very straightforward. The first I think I heard was uh, Sundar Pachai, the, the CEO of Google, which is someone I respect dearly and I think is an amazing human being uh, and Sundar basically came out and said I can't stop how can I stop if you can't guarantee me that Meta and Amazon and all of the others are going to stop too and by the way even if they stop how can you guarantee me that two little kids in Singapore in their garage are not developing AI code that can disrupt my business my re responsibility my accountability if you want to my shareholders uh, it, you know requires me to continue to develop the code and I think that reality is the prisoner's dilemma that I'm talking about. It, it is the first inevitable. It's an arms race that will not stop, not because we cannot stop, we can. If we all agree 
for once in humanity's lifetime that this is existential and that this requires us to stop, we will stop. Okay, mm -hmm. it's, it's really not that complicated. Wake up in the morning and have a cup of coffee instead of writing AI code. It's very simple, okay? But the first inevitable means that the arms race is not going to stop. Okay, uh, even as you look at the at humanity's biggest success in, in that uh, dilemma, which was nuclear weapons, uh, where humanity suddenly got together, you know, very late in the game and said, hey, this is existential. It can threaten the entire existence of humanity. Why don't we slow down uh, or stop? We didn't really stop. We just allowed the big countries to continue to develop nuclear bombs when the smaller countries were banned from doing it. But at least when it comes to nuclear weapons, we had the, uh, the ability to detect any nuclear testing anywhere in the world. So at least we became aware. That's not the case with AI today. I, I also said once uh, in an interview that also it's not just the risk of humans developing risky AI, it's now the risk of AI developing risky AI. So it's basically a nuclear bomb that's capable of, of building other nuclear bombs.